guys and welcome to this next episode of our JavaScript multiplayer game development series. I'm Yuri and today let's see what we can do to improve this app. Because there is so much room for improvement, last time we left off with very basic socket iOS servers that is nevertheless functional so people can connect to that server and then they can talk to each other so we can say let's play and instantly this message gets broadcast to all other connected players on the same server. So what we will do today is make this application slightly prettier. So far there's no CSS at all and this game looks ugly. This is not frankly something that you would show to your friends and invite them to play. So in this little episode I will not touch networking or game dev at all, but I will make this app look better. To make this episode significantly more educational, I want to show you a little trick of how you can edit your CSS in Chrome interactively and save it on your hard drive so that your Chrome is synchronized with your IDE, which is a really cool technique. When it comes to CSS, I saw several different workflows that people use to follow when they write CSS code and most of them are ineffective. So the my top one most ineffective approach. You go to your IDE, you change something, let's say all of a sudden I decided that it will be a great idea to make the background color antique white. Okay, I save the file here, I go back to my uh, page, I refresh it, I don't quite like the color, so maybe it should be just white. I save it again, go back to the browser, I refresh the page. So this approach is terrible because you are wasting so much time switching back and forth. So how we can make this approach a little bit better. So instead of switching and not seeing at the same time what you're editing, because the other problem is when I edit it here, I don't see the result immediately. I need to go back and refresh the page. The other approach, which will be used by a little bit more advanced developers would be to open DevTools, then find the element that you want to edit. Let's say I want to edit this block RPS wrapper and I want it to be in the middle. So I can go select this block in my DOM hierarchy then go right to the styles and start adding styles to this element. So or I can just add the RPS wrapper definition and start adding styles for the class. Okay, so anyway, I'm editing styles in place in my dev tools. Let's say I want the width to be 400 pixels, I want the margin to be zero auto and this way it will be in the middle. So it looks good. The result looks good to me. So now I need to remember to go and copy this little block here to my IDE. Because why? If I forget to do that and I refresh the page, as you see, Chrome will not even warn me that I might lose some of my work. It just refreshes the page and all your styles are gone. So the benefit of this approach is that you see immediately what are you changing. You want to change the margin from zero out to, to let's say five pixels out, you want to give it a little bit bigger margin to make it further away from the top, you can do that, no problem. And you see the changes right away. But the problem, you have to save it then back to IDE. So there is a good way to tell Chrome, hey, I have these files locally. So whenever I'm changing something here, please save it straight away. And to do that, you need to go to sources tab. And here, make sure that the sources sub tab of a tab well, is opened and right click on the empty space and select add folder to the workspace. Um, I have my client folder opened already here, but in your case, just navigate to the place where you save the files, select the client folder because we don't care about the server side files at all at this point and click select. Now you will see this message dev tools requests, requests full access to the folder. Make sure that you do not expose any sensitive information. Well, I don't expose anything in that folder. Besides, I do trust DevTools, so I will allow the full access to this folder. Now, this folder appeared in the orange color, in the different color in my workspace here. So if I will go here and check out the files, those are the files that I have in my project. Now, what you can do is you can open your, let's say you start from the networking folder, blue stands for network, right? You see here localhost 8080. I find my style that I want to edit, which is main CSS. I can open it and then I can right click and say, I want to map to the file system resource. I do that and it automatically picks, oh, here's the file that can match the name of that file, client styles main CSS. Okay, so I'll click that and now there is a mapping and uh, now we can start editing it 
And what's great, let's say I want the margin to be instead of zero, I want it to be 50 pixels. I see the changes right here in the browser. When I save it, the files are automatically saved and my IDE, I can edit the files and I can save them right away. You can go then back to elements because this tab is giving you a little bit more control. You can, for example, undo some of the styles and see how it affects the changes. You can like click and increase, decrease the styles here, right? And then those changes will be automatically, automatically saved to your main CSS. And if you go here again, you will see that the values of the margin is changed. So this is the best way for me to edit CSS files. You just link to the file system resource, then you edit these files in your Chrome browser and it's automatically saved to your local hard drive. So in the remaining part of this video, I will be editing the CSS declaration for uh, this little application and for your entertainment, I'll just do a little time lapse here. Um, I will not be explaining everything about CSS because this course is not about CSS, it's about JavaScript and frankly, we'll be not needing too much CSS in uh, this course overall. Feel free, of course, to check out GitHub and see the source code and see for yourself how exactly this is done. So after about 20 more minutes of playing around with text, fonts, styles, sizes, colors, shadows and everything, I came up with this kind of little minimalistic design that uh, I kind of like. So it's much better than the original version that we had that had no design at all. And of course, I skipped the part where I did CSS. So I didn't do the educational video of how to apply CSS because I just feel that CSS doesn't have to do much with a game dev. In the later phases of this course, we will be spending most of our time in Canvas. So, but if you feel like you would benefit from learning how I did that, it's all, by the way, based on a flexbox layout and uh, shadows and transitions, not much here. Uh, just post me a comment and uh, I'll be more than happy to record another video and show you the process, how exactly we came from the original version to this nice version. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I hope that you like the course so far and in the upcoming videos we'll start to implement the real game logic. So far we have got a chat that works, but players cannot play, right? They cannot do this rock, paper, scissors thing. I want to build game logic and let players, well, play. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and put a like on this video if you enjoyed it. See you in the upcoming videos. Bye!